Thank you, Jesus. Isn't God so good? Hasn't this just been fun already? I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a blast. And everyone in here, you all just look gorgeous. You made it. You made it out to Thursday night. Some of us, you know, some of y'all, you were just able to flip a light switch and come on. Some of us, we had to sneak out of the house. Like army crawl, you know, just to make it here. Hallelujah. Some of you got stuck in traffic. I don't know. Who knows what's going on out there? If, he, if there's even a cloud in North Carolina, people are just, bless him, you know, bless him, Jesus. So I think this is a good time to just cast every care, every worry onto the Lord because he cares for us. To just begin to give God everything, the good and the bad and the ugly, and to tell God how much you love him. Maybe you've not told the Lord how much you love him today. This is a good time to do it. Hallelujah, Lord, we love you, and we praise you, and we magnify you. We worship you, Lord God. You alone are worthy of all of our praise. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just magnify you, and I bless you. In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 14, it says, Therefore he says, Awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. I believe that the Holy Spirit is awakening on the inside of us tonight. And there are some of us that we came in here and we've been a little sleepy. There are some of us that you came in here and you need to be stirred up. Not only do you need to be stirred up, but you need to be filled up. If you came in here on empty tonight, I got some good news for you. You're going to walk out of here full. Not only full, but overflowing with the power of God, of what God has for you. Hallelujah. Expectations, that's the breeding ground for miracles. And you know what I loved about today? That I received so many text messages, and I even saw on social media and people so expectant for what God was going to do during this conference. Women that say, Lord, I know I need something from you. Maybe you know what you need, maybe you don't know what you need, but you know you're going to get something good from God. You know that God is the best gift giver around? And that every gift that he has for us is good? And it's going to bless us, and it's going to heal us, it's going to help us and make us whole. That's who our God is. That's just how faithful he is. Glory to God. Did you know that God, he can't deny himself? It's a part of his character, that faithfulness. It's just a part of who he is. The healing power, the transformation power, that's just God. Whenever you choose to expect and believe, to rely on, to trust in him, to say, God, I am coming believing you for a miracle. If you came in here tonight believing God for a miracle, praise God, that miracle is yours. Glory to God. Whatever it is you came in here tonight, we're going to grab a hold of it with two hands. We're going to hold on tightly. We are not going to let it go. And we're going to allow the love of Christ to transform us from the inside out. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll jump into the word of God. And we're just going to allow the word of God to to illuminate. You know, I like to pray before I get into the word. I like to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate the Word of God on the inside of me. Because there are things in the Word of God that I have read, and then I'll go back and reread it, and the Holy Ghost gives me something brand new. I mean, it's just amazing that this Word is alive. It truly is sharper than any two-edged sword. And whenever you get this Word and you begin to read it out and apply it to your life, believe it, hold fast to it, run with it, then it's going to come in and it's going to get in those cracks and those crevices on the inside of us. And then we say, Holy Spirit, I want you to illuminate that word. That's a part of the gift of the Holy Ghost, that he reveals to us the truth of the Father. So then the Holy Spirit, he'll illuminate that word big on the inside of us, and he'll give you a revelation knowledge of who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. Are you guys ready for all of that? I mean, I know I am. Hallelujah. So let's go ahead and pray. As I pray, you guys hook up with me, and we'll go from there. Heavenly Father, 
We thank you and we praise you. We thank you for your word living big on the inside of us. Lord, I just thank you right now that I hook my faith up with every woman in this place. Lord, I just thank you in the name of Jesus that you are moving mountains tonight. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are healing bodies tonight. I thank you, Lord, that you are mending hearts tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you're setting women free tonight in Jesus' name. I just thank you, Heavenly Father, as we dive into your word, that you illuminate that word on the inside of us. Lord, that it will reveal the truth of who you are in Jesus' name. So, Father God, we receive every good gift that you have for us tonight. Holy Spirit, you just move and have your way. This is your service. I thank you that the words I speak, Heavenly Father, are your words. And that we all have ears to hear and hearts to receive them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the transforming power of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just dedicate this time to you. And, Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you. We just bless your holy name. Hallelujah. We praise you, Father. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. Glory, glory, glory. You alone are worthy of all of our praise. In Jesus' name, we all said amen and amen. We're going to hang out in Romans chapter 8 tonight for a little while, but then if you all know me at all, you know we're going to go through the Bible a good bit. So you can get your notepads ready. Can you see? Do you need more light? Are you okay? A tad more light. Can you turn it up just a little bit for us ladies? Isn't it awesome that we can ask that, you know? I'm like, it's a little dark in here. I saw y'all bringing your notepads out and your pens. Let there be light. (laughs) Woo! Glory to God. You know, I believe that I could tell you every day for a whole year, just how lovely you are, how beautiful you are, and that there are many of you in here that if I told you that every single day, all day long, for a whole year, you still wouldn't believe it. Have you ever felt that way? You know, my husband tells me, I am so blessed, I've got a husband who tells me that he thinks that I'm smoking hot. (laughs) He's watching this right now. (laughs) But I can't tell you how many times he has told me that, and I just don't believe him. You know, I'll go in and just be nasty and negative all about myself, right? We're our own worst critic. We are so harsh on who we are. And I've got to tell you ladies something. You know, why is it if you really think about the female body of just how beautiful it is, you can't help but to think how majestic God is that he created us this way. God knew what he was doing when he created you. You say, even in all of my flaws and imperfections, you know what? God loves you with every curve, every bit of you. Hallelujah. Some of us have more. Some of us need a little more. (laughs) But you know, what I love is that if you truly think about the gifting that we have on the inside of us, if you think about all of these beautiful parts, only God could put something that gorgeous together. You know, in thinking about God's great love for this conference, I begin to think about how our heart, that we're constantly in search for fulfillment, for love, for approval, that we're constantly in search for reality, for belonging, for hope, for acceptance, for an identity, to know the who's, the why's, and the what's. And even if someone told us every single day for a whole year, We truly wouldn't believe it until we had a revelation of it ourselves. You see, no one truly finds out who you are until you come in contact with Jesus Christ. Until you crown Jesus as Lord over your life, over every area of your life. And until you surrender your whole self to him. And a part of knowing how loved we are It all begins with knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. Because in in understanding God's great love for you, and this is where a lot of us miss it. A lot of us miss it because we go in and we have trial after trial and problem after problem. And we'll come in and we wonder, why is this happening? Well, there's a devil. He's real. He's your adversary. He's, He's roaming around this earth seeking whom he may devour. And he's looking for women who are weak. He's looking for women that don't know who they are in Christ Jesus. 
Someone said this the other day, and I loved it. I used to always say, give the devil inch, an inch, and he'll take a mile. And they said, give the devil an inch, and he'll be the ruler over your life. It all begins by knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. Whenever you have a true revelation of who you are in Christ Jesus, then you're going to recognize his great love for you. So that when the enemy comes in and attacks you, when the enemy comes in and he, he tries to tell you how unloved you are, you're able to stand up and say, you know, no, 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 no. That's not what my heavenly father says about me. You know, at the end of the day, there are many days at the end of the day that I don't like Anna that I'm not happy with what I did throughout my day. You ever been there? Where at the end of the day, if it's just all about you, you're, you're just not happy with you. But did you know that at the end of the day, if it's not all about me, but it's about the greater one on the inside of me, then I can be okay. Hallelujah. Because when I have a true revelation of who I am in Christ, those days that aren't my very best become so much greater in him. Those days where I feel like all is lost, I recognize when I lay my head down to sleep at night that he gives his beloved sweet rest and that I'm going to rest all night long because that's his great love for me. Hallelujah. That this is who we are in Christ Jesus. So we're going to jump into Romans chapter 8. We're going to begin to find out tonight who we are in Christ. And then in knowing who we are in Christ, I believe that then takes us to this beautiful place of surrender. It begins with knowing who you are and then recognizing, God, you're just so great that I can't help but to just give my all to you. God is looking for us to surrender our words, our will, and our worship to him. You know, it's a wonderful thing to come to these women's conferences, and I'm so blessed that each one of you decided to come, that you've set it out in your schedule to come out here, and I hope you can come to all of them, all of the sessions. They're, they're each going to be unique and, and Holy Spirit-filled and just led by the Holy Ghost. But did you know at the end of this, if we don't take what we have learned and apply this to our marriage, apply this to our children, apply this to our day-to-day -day walk with others, then we've missed this whole thing. Because the whole purpose of what we're doing right here and recognizing who we are in Christ is to then take that, and you see, each one of us have a mission filled with the Lord, to then take that, and then we have, uh, you know, a ministry to our husbands. Yeah, believe it or not, we do. It's a ministry to our spouse. We then have a ministry to our children that we can then take this of what the Word's going to bring out tonight and apply this to our kids and see their lives changed. That we can then take to, this to our families, to our coworkers, to if you're single and you're believing God. I mean, didn't Sarah's testimony just bless your socks off? A heart surrendered to God. And you know what? If you've been believing God to get pregnant or had an evil report, Mandy's right there should have just stirred your faith right up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But we take our goal is for tonight, tomorrow morning, tomorrow night, and Saturday, that we take all of this. We say, all right, God, you're going to take this and you're going to use this in a mighty way. I'm going to surrender. I'm going to surrender all of me to you. And Lord, in doing that, you're going to use me to be a ministry, to be an instrument for your glory. What a beautiful place to be in. This past year, I've been in such a place personally of surrender, of just saying, God, I want you to weed out what you need to weed out, cut off what you need to cut off. And you know, it hurts sometimes. It doesn't always feel good. It doesn't always feel good to minister your, to your spouse if you're angry at them. It doesn't always feel good to minister to your kids when you just want to wallop them, you know? <laughs> and you think, what on earth? Or to minister to that coworker who's just nasty. It doesn't always feel good. But a surrendered heart is a faithful heart, and God honors faithfulness. So as we jump in and we start to see who we are in Christ, I believe there's heart transformations that are going to take place tonight. I believe there's going to be healings that take place. You go ahead and just hook up, start to use your faith, because the Holy Spirit, he'll do the rest. That's who he is. Hallelujah. So here we go. We understand that many of us in here, we've received Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior. Some of us maybe haven't. Tonight's your night. But we have fully yet to 
just understand what it means to be a daughter of the Most High God. I mean, the, the dance ministry just goes right along perfectly with this. Woo! It made me want to cry every, when they were practicing. Tonight it was so beautiful, ladies. Thank you. I want you to do it again. You know, I'd like to see this tomorrow night too. So then we come to a place, women, this is for us, where we have to begin to develop ourselves as believers, to know our rights and our privileges in Christ. We develop so many other areas in our life when the first area we should develop is who we are in Christ Jesus, because that's what affects everything else around us. So we understand in Romans chapter 8, we got a few things here we're going to talk about of who we are in Christ. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 8, verses 1 and 2, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. In Christ, I am free. Hallelujah. Everyone say, in Christ. I am free. free. You're free from condemnation. Guilt and shame have no hold over you any longer. You see, condemnation, what that does is that gives us an inferiority complex. It robs us of our faith. Our faith in ourselves. Our faith in others. Our faith in God and in his word. We understand that it's it's a sense of unworthiness. If you came in here tonight and you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're free from this. You're free from feeling unworthy. Because when you feel unworthy, what does that do? That destroys our faith. It just comes in to rob, really, our fellowship and our communication with our Heavenly Father. To say you're not good enough to receive that gift. Don't go up front for prayer. Because you remember what you did last night. Don't go up front for prayer because you're not good enough to receive that. Why would you even pray and ask for healing? You're not worthy. Anything that is out to what? Steal, kill, or destroy? That is exactly from the pit of hell. A lie from the devil trying to get you because he doesn't want you to receive God's very best for your life. If you've been suffering from shame, from guilt, from condemnation, and you've asked Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior, let me tell you something. You have been set free condemnation, guilt, shame of that person who you once were, that has no hold on you any longer. Why is it that you're walking in that? Condemnation makes us feel like we we don't have the right to approach God. That you're not good enough or you'll never be good enough. You know, many of us, we've dealt with that or we deal with that right now. We, We deal with this sense of unworthiness that just makes us doubt our Christianity. And that's where we have to grab a hold of, that in Christ, I am the righteousness of God. Everyone say, in Christ, I am the righteousness of God. You know, there are a lot of us that we don't know what righteousness means. We've we've heard it said over and over and over in church. I am right standing with God. I am the righteousness of God. Righteousness, actually, for me personally... That's one of my values that I hold on to in my life, that I've made a part of who I am. You say, what do you mean with that? That when I understand that I'm right standing with God, I know who I am in Christ. So when the devil tries to come in and steal that from me, I say, no, 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 devil. I am right standing with God. So guess what? This belongs to me. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So righteousness means the ability to stand in the presence of the Father God without sense of guilt or inferiority. Ladies, when you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, when you confessed with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus Christ was your Lord, guess what? You became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You're able to go to the throne room. You're able to go to your heavenly father in the name of Jesus and make your requests known to your father who loves you, who cares for you. We see that, that in knowing that we're righteous in God, that also means it, it's the same thing as knowing that you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. Completely recreated. Totally new. That God has made you new. That in Christ, you are new. 
In 2 Corinthians, that same chapter, chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new or have been made new. And understanding that we are right standing with Christ, we understand that in Christ, I am new. I am a new creation in him. Some of you that you've had a past that there have been things that have been trying to grab a hold of you. Because it seems like the devil tries to constantly throw up our past, doesn't he? To say, oh yeah, you remember when you did this? God says, I don't remember it at all. As a matter of fact, he completely forgot it. Washed it under the blood of the Lamb. He tells us that whenever we ask him to be our personal Lord and Savior, that he takes out that old stony heart and he puts in a heart of flesh and that he washes us whiter than snow. Completely just makes us new, makes us whole. You know, women, I, I tell single women all the time that have had premarital sex and, and are believing God to get married again and, and want to do what's right. I said, you know, the cool thing about God is that whenever you repent and ask your heavenly father to forgive you, of sin, that he then makes you a convergent, that he converts you back to being a virgin. Why? Because he makes all things new. Hallelujah. Think about that. Think about the faithfulness of our God, of how good he is and what he does for his children. That he has made me new. I don't have to remember who I once was. I can look forward to who I am in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We understand that righteousness comes to us in in the new creation. God, he's restored our standing with Christ. He takes away that sin nature so then you can have confidence in Christ when we come to the Father with our wants and our desires. It tells us in Romans chapter 8, verses 15 through 17, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption with whom we cry, Abba, Father, and the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. That in Christ Jesus, you are an heir of God, seated in heavenly places, far above all principality and darkness, far above the attacks of the enemy, that you can recognize when the devil tries to come in, you say, oh, no, no, devil. As a matter of fact, I'm seated in heavenly places, that I'm sitting right up there as an heir of of, of God, that I am a daughter of the king, and that I have a voice of victory. Ladies, it's time that we just... Just dare to believe who we are in Christ. That this belongs to us. This is the foundation for everything in our lives. Is to truly understand what belongs to us. These rights, these privileges. I don't have to live defeated. As a daughter of the king, I don't have to live in sickness. I don't have to live in fear. I don't have to live in lack or want or desperation. I don't have to feel lonely anymore. Because I'm a part of the family of Christ. Hallelujah. In Christ, we understand that we have received deliverance from the power of Satan. It's pretty exciting to think about. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, it says, Who God hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. In Romans 8.31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? That in Christ, we've been delivered from the power of Satan. Glory to God. That when anything comes up against you, worry, doubt, depression, you have been delivered from it all. If God is for you, and I just dare to believe that God is for me, then nothing else in this world can be against me. That my God, my Heavenly Father loves me so much that I can stand up as a daughter of the Most High God, that I can take my place with Him and recognize that this belongs to me. Hallelujah. Some of us miss it and, and we say, well, I'm just not worthy. I'm not worthy. God's worthy. And because He's worthy, He's made us worthy. we got to stop saying those things. 
And instead say, you know what? No, greater is he that's living in in me than he that's in the world. As a daughter of the Most High God, that in Christ, I am more than a conqueror. In Christ, I'm above only and not beneath. In Christ, I'm the head and not the tail. In Christ, I'm going to make it. Not only am I going to make it, but God, you're going to bless it. This is who we are in Christ Jesus. This is what belongs to us. Why are we not walking in it? Why is it that we're going around defeated, battling fear, constantly depressed, sick all the time, living in strife and anger and worry? If you were living in the midst of all of that on a regular basis, then you have not yet recognized that you are right standing with Christ Jesus and who you are in Him. Because we understand in Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 36, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Then in verse 37 through 39, but yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded, are you fully persuaded, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God did not create you to see you fail. He created you as an overcomer in Him. You want to see your home changed? You want to see your husband changed? You want to see things change? You go ahead and step into who you are in Christ Jesus, and you'll walk out as, a, as more than a conqueror, but with a voice of victory. That you begin to recognize what's yours, what belongs to you. Ladies, it's time for us to truly grow. There are many believers out there, you know, we're always growing. They get saved, but they're not growing up spiritually. You can't survive off of a five-minute devotional for a full week spiritually. You can't thrive off of just a nugget of truth or someone's really good quote that they took from the Bible that they put their name on it. You can't survive off of that. The Word of God tells us that this is an endurance race. Did you know that if I'm going to go run, if if we all decided to go run 10 miles tomorrow, there are only a handful of us in here that would just make it. (laughs) That you've been training. You've been training long and hard. You can't train five minutes a day and go run 10 miles tomorrow. In this endurance race of life, ladies, it's time that we grow up and that we mature in the things of the Lord. And that we train daily in the word of God. That we train our spirit man to hear the voice of God. That we train ourselves and we press into what God has for us. That all comes from knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. Recognizing his good, good and wonderful gifts that he has for his ladies. Each one of us in here, we're a leading lady for God. God has no back burner women. All of you. You know I once dated a guy. We might as well go there. (laughs) I once dated a guy in Bible college, and I had a friend even warn me spiritually. She said, Anna, she goes, I got to tell you, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you not to date him. And I said, the Holy Spirit didn't tell me that. (laughs) So come to find out, he was dating another girl the same time he was dating me. So you know what? I got that Holy Ghost boldness on the inside. (laughs) And I called him up and I said, I got to tell you something. I'm no back burner girl. And I said, I found out what you've been doing and I don't think so. Don't you ever talk to me again. Ladies, you got to get in there and recognize that you're no back burner woman. That each one of you, you have a, a mission and a commission from God. That you've got a ministry. And in knowing that, it's recognizing who we are in Christ Jesus. That you're more than a conqueror in Christ. That you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God didn't create us to see us fail. What kind of God would that be? 
God created us to see us live our lives out victoriously and to walk that way on a regular basis. Some of you, you've just been trying to hold out to the end. You don't have to. <laughs> you, you just don't. You can live your day-to-day -day life in Christ Jesus, recognizing that every day I am victorious in Him. No matter what comes my way, no matter the attack of the enemy, that I can jump into His Word and that it's going to be life to my body. It's going to bring health to my flesh, medicine to my bones, glory to God that I can get into his word and speak out his word and that my words are containers for God's glory. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, it tells us that whenever we send forth the word of God, that it will accomplish that to which we've sent it to and it will prosper that to which we please. And guess what? It brings it back victorious to us. That's the word of God. That's how alive and living it is. That's knowing who you are in Christ and having that voice of victory. We've got to get to a place where we refuse to allow the world to separate us from the love of Christ. Because it's your choice. God doesn't separate himself from us. We're the ones that we do the separating. We see in Joshua chapter 24 verse 15, it tells us, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord... Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's coming to a place where you truly recognize who you live for, that your house is going to be a house filled with the glory of God, that you're going to serve God come hell or high water no matter what's trying to come out and attack you. You know, we're living in a day and age where this world is trying to call evil good and good evil. And we have to recognize that there are people out there that are hungry. They don't know what they're hungry for, but it's the presence of God. And God wants to use you as a mighty woman of God to go out as a voice of victory to bring the lost in. How can you do that if you don't know yourself? It's making that choice. And in choosing to live in Christ... Is coming to a place of absolute surrender. Surrendering your hopes, your dreams, your marriage, your body, your children, your, your fears, your desires. Really surrendering your all. And did you know that surrendering doesn't mean that you've given up or that you're no longer fighting? As a matter of fact, surrendering, that's submission to the one who's already won the battle for you. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about surrender. And God looking at us, he expects absolute surrender from his children. Surrender is, is saying, God, I'm fully submitted to the authority of Jesus Christ and what he has for my life. You see, because Jesus Christ, he takes us from a place of rogue ambition to redemptive submission. From a place of not my will, Father God, but your will be done. From a place of be it unto me, Lord, according to your word. It's in those moments of surrender that, that whenever you go from that place of rogue ambition, of thinking that I know what's best, because 99.99 million percent of the time that I've missed it is whenever I thought I knew more than God. And then I was trying to go ahead of God. Stepping out before him in my own plan. And it, it was not in faith. More often than not, it was in fear. From feeling like that you know and that it's you against the world, so you're just going to take it all on your own. You know, God did not create you to be alone and for you to, to go out on your own. This rogue ambition of I can do it all. God said, no, I've given you redemptive submission. And a part of that is that I have redeemed you. I have set you free. I have made you whole. I have restored you. Many of us, we look at submission in such a, a wrong light, especially in our marriages. There are a lot of you that you say, I've, I have a hard time with submission. Do you recognize that a part of the ministry, and listen, the Lord's been working on my heart a long time in all of this, okay? <laughs> Preaching to the choir here, ladies. Do you recognize that in our ministry to our spouse of what God has called us to do, 
that, that we're accountable to our Heavenly Father and how we treat Him. And there is one day that we will go before God our Father and He will take account of what we've said to Him. Every idle word of what we've done. And then we look at this ministry to our spouse and we recognize that I'm accountable to Jesus on how I treat Him and what I do. If you're having a hard time in being submissive to your husband, I encourage you to get into 1 Peter chapter 3 because the Lord will teach you just a mighty word out of that. Because if you want to see your husband saved, if you want to see his life changed, then you need to go in and you need to love on him and surrender not only to God, but be submissive to him. And that is not slavery. It's surrendering to the authority of Jesus Christ of what he's called you to do. And he will help you. It's a beautiful place to be in. It's not easy all the time. I'm not a natural peacemaker. I'm not. My husband is. He's the natural peacemaker. He decorated the women's bathroom. <laughs> I didn't do that. And it's so peaceful. Right when you walk in, it looks lovely. I have to submit that part to the Lord. Because I don't want my household to be a household filled with anger or strife because I'm the one causing it because I won't submit to my Heavenly Father and how I treat my husband. All right, let's keep moving on. So what does it look like to surrender your wants and your desires? What does it look like to surrender everything and yield yourself over to the Lord? You know, we've got so many beautiful women in the Word of God who just had to get to that place of surrender. And it came from knowing who they were in Him. So we go on and we can see all of these wonderful examples. You know, in surrendering our children, we have Jochebed, Moses' mom. Just think about what she had to do to surrender her son and surrendering her son to the Lord. You know, she, right when he was born, she saw, she knew which we all know when our kids are born that, that there's something special about them. But the Holy Spirit, I believe, just placed something on the inside of her to help her to surrender him so a nation would be saved. Have you surrendered your children to the Lord, your parenting style, your hopes and your dreams for your family? Have you surrendered your, your outlook, your emotions, or your self-esteem to God, like Esther? Esther came in after the other queen was let go. Think about it. Esther truly had to get to a place. And you know what I love about Esther? Not only did she work on her outside, but she worked on her inside. It was, it was a, a, just from the inside out all the way through. If you're struggling with self-esteem, you need to get in and find scripture and apply that. But then also you need to start to fix yourself up. Faith without works is dead. Esther got chosen, yes, because she had a lovely heart and she's loving on the king and talking to him. But guess what? She perfumed herself up and did everything that she could. There are days when I don't feel like it, but, you know, if I'm having a rough morning, I go in and I just paint my face red. You know what I'm talking about? Put my good-looking undies on. It makes me feel better. All of y'all have them. Don't even act like you don't. Woo -woo. But there are things that we can do to stir it up that will help the outside. Just make us feel good. All right, we'll move on. <laughs> Have you surrendered your past, your present, and your future? We see Ruth as such a wonderful example. Ruth, in surrendering herself, she became a part of the lineage of David. Just think about what God does when you surrender. Have you surrendered the call of God upon your life like Mary, the mother of Jesus? According to your word, Lord, be it unto me. Have you surrendered your secret desires? We've got Mary's cousin Elizabeth. You know, she had a secret desire to have a baby. But she, she was advancing in years. One thing we know about Elizabeth is she is a woman of praise and thanksgiving, a woman who just chose to believe in God. And what I love about this with Elizabeth is not only did God bless her with a child, but he gave her John the Baptist. Like, he gave her a run for, his, you know, her money. He's like, all right, I'm going to give you a kid. Just think about just how funny God is, you know, how cool he is when we surrender everything over to him. Have you surrendered your all? Anna the prophetess, she's widowed after seven years, a woman older in age, but she dedicated her life to prophesying the coming of our king. 
in this place of surrender, God equips us. God doesn't just call you to surrender. You see, he, he comes in and he'll minister to us of who we are in him, of what belongs to us. But then he fully equips us to get the job done. That's how good our God is. He didn't just throw you in the deep end and tell you to swim. As a matter of fact, he gives us the tools that we need to succeed in his expectation. We understand that in him we're complete. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 through 10, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. That's recognizing That God has qualified me to be a sufficient minister in all areas of my life through His Spirit. And it's by His Spirit dwelling on the inside of me. You're complete in Christ Jesus to accomplish the plan and the purpose of what He's called you to accomplish. You're complete in Christ to raise your children in a godly home. You're complete in Christ to live in a godly, wholesome marriage. You're complete in Christ to continue to, to, continue to advance in the job and the calling that he's placed you in. Hallelujah. In Christ, I'm complete. There aren't pieces of you that are missing. You're not less than. That's not who you are. You're right standing through God in Christ. He has made you righteous in him. Hallelujah. Have you surrendered your all? We go on to see that in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, For it is not your strength, but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work. What's he doing? What's he doing in you? Well, he's strengthening you. This is in the Amplified. He's energizing you, and he's creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. Hallelujah. That in being in complete, just being complete in him and knowing who you are in Christ Jesus, that on those days you get up and you don't feel like it, that you surrender who you are to him, you surrender your will to him, you surrender your words to him, you surrender your worship to him, then you know what he's going to do? He's going to energize you. Hallelujah. He's going to strengthen you. He's going to create in you the longing to accomplish what you need to do that day. And it's all for his glory, for his good pleasure. Why? Because he has created you more than a conqueror. Glory to God. Because you are complete in him. Ladies, we've got to surrender our will, our words, and our worship to the Lord. God expects nothing less. And he deserves our very best. And surrendering our will to the Lord, it's saying, God, you lead and I'll follow. Hallelujah. And I think we've got enough time here. I want you to put on the screen the first one. You can get your phones out and take pictures of this. But the Lord gave me 10 things of what I'm choosing to do whenever I surrender myself, of saying, Lord, you lead and I'll follow, that this is who I am in in you, and, and you can take this, and I've given you a scripture to go with it. We see in saying, God, I'm surrendering everything to you is choosing to mature spiritually by renewing my mind daily in the word of God. It's choosing holiness by setting my body apart from this world. It's choosing godly values and attitudes when I don't want to. It's choosing to not only live in the Spirit, but to walk in the Spirit. It's choosing to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying, then obeying His voice. It's choosing to serve others as Christ would serve others. We're on the second one. Everybody getting it? No? I can put them back up. We'll put them back up at the end if you want them. It's choosing prayer over worry, doubt, or fear. It's choosing praise over defeat. It's choosing love over hate. And it's choosing life over death. We're saying, God, I I believe that in surrendering my will to you, Lord, that I'm giving you my whole heart. Whenever we set our whole heart on Jesus, we recognize that there's only good, better, and best in him. Hallelujah. 
In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his plan and his purpose. That as I surrender, what does it look like to surrender my will to God? You know, there's a wonderful story that we can read about here, and uh, I'm just going to touch on it briefly, and then we'll wrap up here and just see what the Holy Spirit wants to do. But it's a beautiful story about a woman named Abigail found in 1 Samuel chapter 25. And so we see someone who truly had to surrender her will, her words, and her worship in order to see just her life preserved. So the Bible tells us about Abigail that this was a beautiful woman and that also she was a a woman full full with wisdom, with, with grace, that she is just one of the loveliest women in the word of God. And her, her family married her off to a very wealthy drunk named Nabal. His name actually means foolish. So we see in this chapter, we see this beautiful woman of God married to a fool. The Bible continues to confirm this about her spouse all throughout this chapter. And so what takes place? is that we see David, that he is on Nabal's land, and, you know, Saul had gone off the deep end. So we see David here, and he's actually helping to protect this land. He's, He's treating the land right. He's helping the shepherds out. He's got about 600 men with him. So he goes in, and he asks Nabal if he would feed his men. And Nabal, because he's a fool, he says, no, no, I will not. I will not feed your men basically what he comes in to say. Well, David starts off as a peacemaker, okay? Well, after Nabal said no, David goes off and he says, all right, everybody, grab your sword because tomorrow we're going to go kill the whole family. You know, it's so funny to think about David. Like, you know, like here he is. Oh, you know, it's going to be blessed. Like it starts off all of this peacefulness and then Nabal's like, absolutely not. David's like, kill them all. (laughs) So then we have Abigail, beautiful, lovely Abigail, that in this home where her husband is is a drunk mess, where you know that she is dealing with demonic forces in his life on a day-to-day basis. And I know there are many of us in here that we have homes that we have dealt with that. And maybe it's not from a spouse, but there are other things that have tried to come against you to try to steal the very character of God out of you. And this is where you have got to surrender your will to the Lord, that no matter what the enemy is, that you stand strong in who you are in the character of Christ, of what he's called you to be. 